See, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state. Your breakthrough may not come the way somebody else got their breakthrough. Your breakthrough may come a totally different way. God has given you the victory and they call it the triumph is yours. Health is a mindset. Wealth is a mindset. Prosperity is a mindset. If whatever you're faced with is more powerful than your faith, then you've been watching it too long. And in the looking at the situation too long, you lose your faith and you begin to believe what you see. You see, your faith becomes what you see. So now you are synchronized with that thing. You synchronize with a lie. You know, listen carefully. You know, the strength of any situation, any circumstance is that you believe it. Matthew 9, 29. Go to Matthew 9, 29 real quickly. Matthew 9, 20. Watch what Jesus said. He said to the blind man that, that came to him and he ministered to them. And then he, he gave him a word. He said, then touched he their eyes saying, according to your what? faith, be it unto you. In other words, it's according to your belief. You experience what you believe about yourself. What you believe about yourself is what you're experiencing. Now, if you change your belief, you're going to change your experience. Can God change your reality? No matter what that reality out here, I'm telling you there's power that God gives the believer how to change the reality by understanding these principles that even those situations are looking real right there. But if I keep looking at that, it becomes expansion, it promotes, and it can continue on. But if I take my eyes and put it on the unseen, which faith caused me to see what God wants me to see, I can change my reality and I can walk in a new freedom that nothing can stop me from being what God's created me to be. Now that requires you changing the way you believe. So let's talk about reality now. How many of you know that there's a such thing called cancer? There's a such thing called high blood pressure. There's a such thing called arthritis. Sugar diabetes. How many know there's such a thing? But let's eliminate it from our psyche. And the way you eliminate it from your psyche is you don't believe. Anything you believe will eventually become your reality. Because you believe. That's your now situation. The now of your faith is your miracle. You got that? Okay, so the now of your faith is your miracle, but the now of your situation is that circumstance. So the question is this. What are you looking at? What appears to be more real to you? You remember when the, God told Moses, he says, uh, uh, I've given you the land and uh, go in and possess the land. And he raised up, what, 12 spies to go and search out the land. They went out to search the land out. 12 spies went out the land. They saw the land flowing with milk and honey. They saw with what? With the pomegranates, the grapes and all, just like God said the land would be. And then there were 10 spies that came back. And gave an evil report and said, there's giants in the land. We're not able to take that land. But there's two came back and said, they're bread for us. We're able to take it. It's just like God said it. They saw beyond what those 10 spies were seeing. Even though it was a fact, watch this, there was giants in the land. But even though it was a fact, but it wasn't true that they couldn't take it. And so what they did, they wound up saying, we are as grasshoppers in their sight. In other words, in the sight of the giants, we look like grasshoppers. And the giants never saw them. They got an image of themselves by themselves and the giants never saw them. They assumed we were, going to be, we were just like grasshoppers. The two came back and said, hey, we're well able to do it. You see, wherever your attention goes, your power flows. What has your attention more is what has your power. 
That's why now faith is what? The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So the question is, what are you looking at? What appears to be more real to you? What you focus on expands. What you focus on promotes. It increases. Okay? You remember the church in the book of Acts? And Peter was taken into prison. And he's in the prison. He's asleep. And uh, Hera is about to send for him the next day so they can kill him. They said, behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and the light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, arise up quickly. And his change what? Fell off his hand. He just heard a word. Get up, rise. And the change came off. Maybe you hear a word today that all of a sudden healing comes in your body. Maybe a situation that you've been faced with already began to change. God began to shift your reality. You thought it was going to be this way. God says, I'm going to, I'm going to show you that this is my way. And I can bring you to another level, another dimension in your purpose, in your destiny. So all of a sudden the change fell off his hand. And so I won't go through the whole thing up there. But there's a part in there. The church had been praying. They've been praying for Peter's release. Lord, Bring Peter out. Lord, don't let him be killed. Lord, bring him out. And they wind up, God releases him, brings him out of the prison, and he comes knocking on the door. He's knocking on the door. Miracles are knocking on the door. Miracles knocking on the door. Been praying for it, you've been believing for it, now it shows up. And she looks and she runs back to the prayer gathering, doesn't even open the door. The very thing that we're praying for, when God sent it, they sent it back. And then it said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so, then said they, it is an angel. They didn't even believe it was Peter. This has got to be an angel. It's not Peter. It's got to be an angel. Now, this is what they've been praying for. This is what you believe for. And it shows up. Watch this. And it says, but Peter, continue what? Come on, say continue knocking. Say keep knocking. Say keep knocking. Keep knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. God sent a move of the spirit. The people, listen, they didn't understand it. They were praying for it, but they were trying to send it back. And see, today, people deny God for being God. Many times, Peter, see, there's some Peters that keep, have to keep knocking on the door. Come on, Peters. We have to keep knocking on the door. And see, you got to understand that this mentality that Peter had, he, he was knocking at the door. For what they had prayed for. So they denied a miracle to accept a fact. If you accept the fact and not the miracle, you won't experience the miracle. So if it wasn't for Peter continue knocking, what that tells me is that you've got to know that when you've been delivered. You got to know, even when people around you doesn't accept your deliverance, even when people around you doesn't accept, you got to answer prayer. You got to keep on walking in faith. You got to keep on walking no matter what other folks think about you. It does not matter what they believe or not. It matters what you believe. What you believe. You see, I know what I have been delivered from. I know what my wife has been brought Raised up by God, by the miracle working power of God. I can look around this church and see the miracles that happened in this, in this house when, when the doctor says, you know, uh, the last go round and we don't know what we're going to do. God shows up. Power of God shows up. Those of you that are watching my YouTube stream right now, don't turn this off because you're about to see miracles of breakthrough in your home and your family. The spirit of God is coming upon you and tell you right now, don't stop knocking. Keep knocking. Keep saying. Keep delivering. Keep speaking what God says about you and watch the miracle begin to break forth. Hallelujah. I know what I've been healed from. I know what I've been delivered from. 
Now, whether any people accept it or not, it's irrelevant. Accept your deliverance. So here it is. Here it is. Faith first begins with you in God. What do you believe? What do you believe? Peter knew he was delivered even when he went to the church and they did not accept that he was delivered. Listen, let me put it this way. The now of time is circumstance. The now of faith is your miracle. What is a circumstance? Whatever circumstance you're in right now, what is a circumstance? A circumstance is a circumstance is standing in a circle. Circumstance. You're surrounded by a circumstance. So circumstance is a circle you stand in. And you know what's interesting? You can be in a circumstance of life so long that you begin to think according to your circumstance. You can be in a situation so long that you begin to accept it as a reality. You can begin to say things that you can't do where you can't go, how you're going to be able to accomplish this because your circumstance has dictated to your reality. So in your mind, it's your circumstances. If your circumstances allow it, then you can do it. You see, in, if your circumstances allow it, it's not your faith that believes it. Every circumstance has a beginning point because it's a circumstance. It has an ending point. There is an expiration date on every circumstance. I don't care what the situation is, there's an expiration date on that. It has a beginning, it has an ending point. Now, every circumstance has a natural period of time. No circumstance is designed to be forever. Clap your hands and give God some glory for that. Amen. I mean, that's good news, right? No circumstance can last forever. If no circumstance is forever, what does it say in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1? Keep in mind, every circumstance has a what? Beginning point and it has a what? Ending point. All right. Can God change your reality? Can God change your reality? All right. To everything to everything, to everything, to everything, everything, everything. I don't care what that circumstance or situation, to everything, there is a what? Season. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Everything under heaven, which time God created, is under time. Glory to God. When you live from eternity, you are not bound by time. Time is a creation of God. When God created man, he created his image and after his likeness, he did not create him to be uh, bound by time. Yet we in the physical realm, we deal with time, but we have ability to transcend time because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith can bring you beyond the time that you see here because, because you look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are what? not seen. But the things that are not seen are eternal. The things that you see is temporal. It's not going going to last. Hallelujah. It's not going to last. It's going to come to an end at some point, but you got to get this in your spirit. God can change your reality. You see, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state.